Greetings and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Quarter Guard Static, Static IP for all your resources. Please like, share, and subscribe, and most importantly, reach out to me in the comment section for any help, tips, and suggestions. Right, so before we begin the lag, I first like to give a shout out to Angular, right, the modern web framework for any use case, for any scenario, and for all of the issues that you may come across. Wanna reach out to Heroku, it's a great cloud backend service with all, all the infrastructure set up required in AWS, GCP, and so on. And there's also Quota Guard, the focus on our lab today. Quota Guard is a static IP resource that does much more when it comes to networking, but mainly it's mostly useful as a static IP. Now let's get to the lab. So first we'd go at, we'd like to start up our Angular app which is already running on port 4200. We'll head there soon, but first we wanna go ahead and we want to be able to log into our application here. We wanna be able to log into the Heroku Cloud. So first, what we'd like to do is log in. Log into the Heroku Cloud XO, right? And now we are logged in. However, we're not done there. What we want to go ahead and do is we want to create an Heroku app, right? I'm going to name mine Quota Guard 2313. And now our app is created like so. So we can head back to our terminal. And then what we want to provide is you want to um, initialize a git repo in the project root, right? So I want to make sure I'm in the project root. Great, git init, right? And I, we're not doing it properly, but that's more than fine with me. And now I want to be able to see the git URL for my Heroku Right, so get remote the commands here. I also wrote the command here. And dash A, so that for all future commands, we wouldn't have to use, we will have to specify this. And then, and then in PowerShell, it's like support for control C and control V. And then that's the name, not right, that's a wrong app, right? I named the quota guard. So let me go ahead and fix it like so. Oh. And then Heroku get remote. And also in addition, You also want to add the re the remote origin for GitHub as well, because like it or not, in part, Heroku partially needs um, some of the config variables and Git to be initialized before it could work properly. Right now, with that said, we want to provide for build packs and Heroku build packs. Say, for example, you need to install some packages via apt or you need to use some drivers. Right, that's what build packs are for. Be able to add that functionality into your app. Using them is easy. Setting them up is an interesting story. However, we're going to focus on using them, which is actually more easy than it seems. All you need to do is copy and paste these commands here, right? And it's attaching them to our quota guard app. Right. So the packs, so if you run Heroku build packs. Right, you can see our app name and now we are providing for them. Right. Right. And then if you're running, right, this build pack is what is going to be used for our PyODBC. Now to take a look at the QG tunnel file we have here is we have how QG tunnel works is that there's a proxy, right? 
So all your requests are going to go through a proxy. However, it needs a, a port to actually try to set up its application, right? So we provide for a port, localhost at port 1433, where obviously this URL scheme means that you could provide for a remote host if need be, say if you're in like an intranet, things like that. And then you also want to provide for a connect, right? So basically anytime that Quota Guard receives this request coming from any application, right? It's going to take that request. It's going to first send it through port 1433 and then it's going to be sent to its proxy. So I have yeah, that request proxied and then on the receiving end, it's going to come from that proxy which is in turn effectively showing a static IP. Other parameters that go in this file are transparent. That's just something means you could use 127.0.0.1 loopback address, or you could use localhost as well. And then there's encrypted. However, the ODBC driver that we're using is version 17 from Microsoft, which comes with an encryption option. So we don't need to encrypt it as well. Right, so now what we need to go ahead and do is we need to head back to our dashboard and we need to provide for Quota Static to be working with the app. What we want to head and do is we want to go to resources, add ons, right? There's a lot, right? Roku takes care of that infrastructure for you. That's what I love about it so much. It's daunting until you really get to it. It's very, very simple to get using. Right, now we find Quota Guard static IPs along with other resources from Quota Guard. And now we're going to install it, provide for starter free, and then app provision to Quota Guard, our Quota Guard app. Right, and now submit the order form. Hopefully it goes through. Every time I see that button, submit order form, it's kind of scary because it's like, well, you're going to be rejected. However, it goes through every time. You don't have to worry about it. We can head back to our CLI. We want to go ahead and do is we want to, we want to now run our regular git commit. We want to add everything. We want to be able to commit. And now we want to push to GitHub. And now you also notice that there's a subtree here. Also, I don't want to go ahead and push everything. I want to push the whole folder. I just need to push the backend environment, right? So like so, we're going to run this command. And now what's going to happen, it's going to build our environment for our backend. Right, and I'll pause the video while this runs. This actually takes a bit. And then it's very good. There's some interesting logs that come up in the terminal. So you can understand what's happening when you use different build packs. You can understand what's happening when you're using add-ons. All right, so our build has started, has succeeded and our app is running so now what we want to go ahead and do is head over to our front end all right and now we want to try and connect to our database all right and then we're going to get this course error here we want to see what's going on in our cli right so we could see our ip was was rejected right and now if you keep on if now if i go ahead and keep on clicking I'm still going to get this IP issue, right? Now what I can do is I could go to take this IP, try to whitelist it. However, let, let me just make a slight modification here.
update set tree right and now this build set is going to take a while so I'm going to go ahead and pause it right and I definitely want you to pay attention to this IP this IP is going to change so let's say for example this is the IP that I whitelisted white, white it is going to change all right so now my Heroku backend is started up again Right, what I'm going to go ahead and do, try to click to connect. All right, and now the IP is not list, white listed. And see, now we have a completely different IP. So now we're just going to go ahead in circles and keep white listing. So what we need to go ahead to do is head to our proc file. Right, and now we want to provide this extra argument. Then QG tunnel EL right and now if we head over to our dashboard in quota guard right we're going to see our IPs right these are our two IPs these are our static IPs right what we need to provide, it will provide, as you can see in our proc file, is this bin QG tuple, right? So we have the shell script we need to execute. However, in our, if you head over to, right, if I head into the backend route, right, I have my die QG tunnel, I have the vendor. I have the vendor folder and then I have the bin folder, right? QG tunnels that configuration I said earlier. And then the binary folder, right, is where the executable lives. And if you head into our vendor folder, right, we can see that's where all the helpers are, right? The dependencies that we need, right? And then definitely for what I recommend to the creators of Coda Guard, definitely change this vendor, right? Because you Ruby actually use this when it comes to local packages. Ruby actually uses this as well, right? So that's the small change I wanted to go ahead and make on the CD back into the project root. Get status. I think I'm there yet. CD dot die get status. Right. Ls. All right. I'm in project root. Now get add. Get commit. And now get subtree. All right, and now I'm gonna pause the video. All right, it's gonna take. All right, so my Heroku backend is ready to go. We're going to head to the site and now we are going to try to click to connect one more time right and now we see that we are connected right and if we head into our logs right we can see that we have a connection established so thanks for watching please like share and subscribe most importantly reach out to me in the comment section for any help tips and suggestions. A link to the lab as well as social media will be posted in the video description.